Are you feeling constantly tired and don't really know why? The answer might be simpler than you think. In this video, we'll uncover how one essential vitamin could be behind your fatigue, low mood, low motivation, and even depression. My name is Dr. Taranella, and this channel is dedicated to helping you understand and optimize your health. And today we're diving into the critical role of vitamin B12 in maintaining and helping support energy levels. If you're liking these videos and getting a lot out of these videos, hit the like and subscribe button so you can continue receiving this important health information and insights. By the end of this video, you should better understand why B12 is so essential and how you can recognize in your own self if you might be deficient and the best way to resolve that deficiency. All right, let's jump into the video. So does vitamin B12 help with energy? Before we get too far into the video and the role of B12 in energy, I'd like to share some of my clinical experiences with vitamin B12 helping to boost energy levels. I probably administered B12 to over a thousand patients and for the vast majority, it was given specifically to help with their energy and mood. Most of these cases followed laboratory analysis that revealed either a clear deficiency or a suboptimal level of B12, what we often refer to as insufficiency. And we'll discuss how you can actually identify that through laboratory analysis later in the video, but more importantly, does B12 really help with energy? The answer is yes. In my clinical experience and in the experience of many of my patients that have treated, B12 absolutely helps with energy. I've seen it completely resolve long-standing fatigue in some cases and provide a more modest improvement in others. And this could be like bringing someone from an energy level of four to five out of 10 to like a six out of 10. However, when I searched through research papers to try to better understand this topic, I was surprised to find that the evidence that B12 helps energy levels was kind of sparse. In fact, some of the papers that I reviewed suggested that B12 had no clinical significance for supporting energy, mood, and cognitive function. Despite this mixed research, my clinical experience tells me that B12 definitely works but it doesn't work for everyone. So later we'll discuss patient selection and how to determine if B12 might be the source of your fatigue. But first let's look at a paper that I did find that seemed to be well-designed and provides us with some insights on this question about B12 supporting energy levels. So it was a fairly small study and it was conducted on patients that had chronic tiredness but didn't have clinically significant vitamin B12 deficiency. And obviously the research were looking to assess the potential benefits of vitamin B12 on non-deficient population. And they did use a double-blind placebo-controlled trial. And so in terms of the vitamin B12 levels, it just means that they were above the typical clinical threshold for deficiency, which is defined as around 200 picograms per ml. So all the participants in this study actually had levels that were higher than that low end of the threshold. And the primary outcome or the primary thing that they were measuring was changes in perceived energy and symptoms of being tired. So they basically filled out a questionnaire and assessment to quantify their levels of fatigue, both before and after the intervention. And so this should provide us a clear picture of the impact of vitamin B12 before and vitamin B12 after. And Here's an example of that questionnaire right here. And the conclusion of the study was basically that vitamin B12 could be beneficial in reducing symptoms of tiredness, even in individuals without clinically diagnostic deficiencies. And that's been exactly my clinical experience as well, that it absolutely does help in some people some of the time. And I've had the opposite happen as well. So let's look at how does vitamin B12 actually support energy levels? So B12 is a vital part of DNA production, producing those DNA-based pairs, which is necessary for red blood cell production and really all the cells in your body. And if you don't have enough red blood cells, well, you're going to become anemic. Some forms of anemia are actually from B12 and not iron deficiency, like what most people assume when they have anemia. But as you know, when you have anemia, typically you are going to be more tired and fatigued. That's because you don't have enough oxygen circulating around in your blood because you don't have enough hemoglobin to carry that oxygen. 
beyond DNA and red blood cell support, B12 plays critical roles in supporting things like methionine production and CME and also succinate production. Methionine and CME, CME is an essential part of many different systems in our body. It supports detoxification, mood regulation, and, in, and even energy production. And for the most part, it's mostly a direct reflection of the methylation process that many people are familiar with. B12 is a key player in methylation. In terms of metabolism and direct ATP production, B12 also helps in the breakdown of certain types of fatty acids that can then turn into succinate. And although it's only involved in breaking down certain types of fatty acids like odd chain fatty acids, it's still needed to break these fatty acids down. If you don't have enough B12, you're sort of limiting your energy output. So if you think something like this might be going on with you, how will we identify it? Well, symptoms are a good place to start with, and we'll move into laboratory analysis too, but B12 deficiency can be challenging because the symptoms such as fatigue, low energy, memory loss maybe, and mood changes are pretty vague. They can be attributed to a lot of different things. There's also sometimes neuropathy-like symptoms, numbness and tingling in like your legs or hands. So those are a little more specific. So if you're having those, may clue you in, but not everyone does have those. And so a lot of times B12 deficiency symptoms can be attributed to a lot of different things. And this is why laboratory analysis can often be very helpful to pinpoint what's going on. And a simple way to check for B12 deficiency is through a serum blood test. Now, typically a level of 200 picograms per ml is considered to be frankly low, but I would consider anything less than 500 to be suboptimal or insufficient. And this means there's a significant potential for you if your levels are in this range to benefit from taking B12. And the lower your levels are, the more likely you are to experience significant benefit from taking vitamin B12. And so the lower your levels are, the more persistent and urgent you should be about taking higher levels of vitamin B12. And so then comes the question, how much vitamin B12 should I actually take? How often should I take it? And how long do I need to take it? And the answer is going to be, well, that depends on how low your levels are. But the lower they are, the more reason there is for you to take injections versus doing uh, other forms of B12. If you're someone that consumes animal products like beef and chicken and eggs, these are good sources of B12. And if your levels are still low, it suggests that you're possibly not absorbing the vitamin B12 properly. If this is the case, swallowing more vitamin B12 is not really going to do a whole lot. And injections have the benefit of raising your levels more quickly and also bypassing the GI system, which can, for some people, be tricky to get past. Some people, when you're super low, may opt for twice weekly injections of 500 to 1,000 micrograms per shot for four to six weeks and then decrease the frequency and also the amount there afterwards. You can also use sublingual B12. Sublingual B12 is basically the type that goes under your tongue and there's a capillary system under your tongue which allows the vitamin B12 to absorb and bypass the digestive tract. And using sublingual B12 will eventually bring your levels up to where you would get with injections. It's just gonna probably take a much longer time in order to achieve that desired effect especially if your levels are very, very low. Even if you're doubling up or tripling up the amount of vitamin B12, say you're taking 5,000 micrograms per day, you're limited in how much is going to absorb through that track. So even if you double, triple the amount that you're taking sublingually, it's going to be limited in how much your body uptakes it. So what are some sources of vitamin B12? Well, you can find B12 in a lot of different sources, as I alluded to, like meats and fish and dairy products. And even cereals are sometimes fortified with vitamin B12. So incorporating more of these into your diet if you're not consuming them can also raise your vitamin B12 level. But the real question isn't really do you eat these foods, it's really are you eating enough of these foods? And if you're unsure, it's best to get tested for B12. Testing is crucial because it's going to inform you of how long you need to take your vitamin B12 for, for instance what quantity and also which route. If you say, for instance, oh, well, I'm already consuming these foods, so it can't be that, that's kind of the wrong approach to take. The idea is you get tested, that's going to inform you what's going on. And then from there, you decide, oh, I must not be absorbing it. 
or I'm fine. Then you can move on to looking at what else could be causing your fatigue or tiredness. There are some plants that contain vitamin B12, but those sources of vitamin B12 are limited. I would say the main one you can use would be something like nutritional yeast does have a decent amount of vitamin B12 in it and other B vitamins as well. So just to kind of summarize here, vitamin B12 is definitely a powerhouse nutrient that plays a lot of roles in keeping our energy levels up and making sure we have enough DNA and cell turnover capabilities. And through that, it absolutely does help support energy levels. Recognizing the symptoms of vitamin B12 can be tricky as distinguished from other health issues unless you have more than neuropathy going on. You also want to look at whether or not you're getting good sources of vitamin B12 from your food. And in any case, if you're having ongoing fatigue, the idea is that you want to get your blood levels checked for this basic serum test. Now, there are other tests you can do to look at vitamin B12 levels that are a little more nuanced and accurate than the serum test. But I consider these serum B12 tests low-hanging fruit, very easy to do, very inexpensive, and very helpful at potentially improving your energy with very minimal cost and effort to you. Once you've figured out if you're low or suboptimal, then it's time to start supplementing with either a sublingual or injection or really cranking up on the diet, which sometimes can be enough as well if you're willing to wait on the improvement in your energy. If you've had your B12 level checked in the past and didn't come up low, but it's been several months, maybe 12 months or more, it may be time to give it another look to ensure that you are getting adequate amounts. These things do change based on your diet and what's going on demands of your body. So hopefully this video gives you a better understanding of whether or not B12 helps with energy and how it can impact your energy levels and mood. If you have questions, please drop them in the comment section. That's why I do the videos to help you better understand what's going on in your body. If you're looking for a more nuanced, detailed answer, consider joining the membership program where I'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your questions. Now there's lots of different things to discuss about B12. And I did write a book on vitamin B12 called Don't Be Deficient. And I'll put a link to the book in the description if you want to check that out. It's loaded with great information. Now, one question you might still have about vitamin B12 and whether or not it can help you is on the side of testing. And if you want a more in-depth look at how to test for vitamin B12, the book goes into a lot of detail. I also did a video that goes into some of the same details, but not as much depth. And you can find that video here. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.